Here is an RGB master. This could be the product of a DSLR or one-shot color CCD or a monochrome camera's individual R, G, and B masters combined prior to Photoshop. If you wish to follow my lead and combine individual R, G, and B masters here, let me remind you how it's done. It's that easy. No matter what camera type you use, we're now on an even playing field. Here's our old friend, the histogram, and three equally compressed graphs in need of development. Let's create a Curves Adjustment Layer and apply a basic curve. Better yet, Let's load a previously saved ACV Curves file. Remember to work in the combined RGB channel to maintain the individual channel's relationships to one another. Clicking on the Cache Refresh, I get a more accurate picture of the result of the stretch and it gives me some direction. The scrunched pixels are stretching, but I can't tell much from the graph yet. Let's apply several iterations. Notice the red channel is shifted right, more than G or B and we can see the red weightiness of the image. Info's numbers bear this out. This is an example of color bias, unevenness in the background level of the channels, gradients, or disparity in color exposure time can cause it. The imbalance is rooted in shadow, but affects all levels of gray. A normalized background command works well during pre-processing and in Photoshop we further eliminate bias by accurately setting black points. Remember those? Of course we do that in individual channels. Dragging the shadow slider to the toe of the actual data. Careful not to clip any legitimate dim signal. A super stretch in a safe layer shows a gradient at lower right. That may be the source of the red bias. We can't back up because we have to reveal problems before we can fix them. There are pre-processing routines in various software. PixInsight's DBE probably the best, but I prefer Gradient Exterminator. <laughs> Refer back to Intermediate Part 1, Number 8 for detailed instruction. There, GXT has eliminated any remaining unnatural bias. Let's check if black points can be refined with levels. Also recall from Intermediate Part 1, number 5, the color picker trick for refining background levels even further. Now some curves. Zoom in to choose a good background level and place a control point on the graph. A second point to display dimmest wisps. And a third 
to hold down core detail. I like it. Let's finish global curves and get some contrast back into the galaxy with local changes. We could use anchored curves or wide radius unsharp masking. In my unbiased opinion, that's a pretty nice RGB.